everybody. Welcome back to the Bull and Barley on this lazy Saturday. Thank you for joining me again. I am delighted you came by. If you're ready for a little bit of a relaxing evening, go ahead and light up a pipe and join me. A little discussion, a little bit of, a little bit of tobacco talk, you know, not really a review, but a little tobacco talk. New blend I'm trying out. I've been on the hunt for a, um, like a staple Virginia that I'm going to bulk buy for long-term stashing. Um, even, even if it's not a tin tobacco, I've just been looking around and I want a straight Virginia or a mostly straight Virginia. Um, and one that comes to the top of the conversation a lot is Orlick Golden Sliced. It's been around for a very long time. Made in Denmark, uh, Scandinavian tobacco group. Yep, just golden matured Virginias with a touch of perique. And it does have a touch of perique in it. Would y'all stop arguing about it? Every stinking review, and I'm not gonna review this fully online here on YouTube because it is probably one of the most reviewed tobaccos out there. Um, but everybody's always arguing about the whether twos and wherefores or whether or not it has perique in it. It has a touch of it, according to the manufacturer. Stop arguing. They blended it. They know what's in it. If they don't, they didn't blend it or they didn't do a very good job. But these guys are top-notch blenders, so they know what's in it. Anyway, I decided to try it out for myself. Because I am more of a straight Virginia type. This is my second bowl today. I was a little vigorous with the packing because I was very excited to go again. But it comes in these, I got a big tin from pipesandcigars.com. They took real good care of me. They were out of the others that I had originally ordered and they sent me this lickety split. Like I ordered two of the 1.7 tens. Or 50 grams, whatever. So they sent me this 100 gram tins as a, as a replacement. It comes as a flake. And it is probably one of the coolest looking flakes I've ever seen. It is this beautiful sheet of folded flakes. It's like a flake towel. It's like a flake towelette. Of tobacco it's really wonderful stuff and it's got all the normal typical I guess you could say typical Virginia notes of hay and grass and a little bit of raisin just really clean pure slight slight pepper of, of the periques and you can see some of the darker flake in there that spotted throughout yeah a little bit of perique in there if you know how to spot it, it's obvious to tell that there's something other than just straight Virginias. Well, yeah, that my first impressions on the tin note were just, man, this is such a great, pure, clean Virginia. It's just wonderful smelling. No casing or topping, which I really like. It says, smoked by all shrewd judges. So, yeah, this one, um... I was excited to get into it. I had a lot of recommendation for it, seen a lot of review on it. I'm not going to go crazy with a review on this thing because we could sit here and repeat all the things you've probably heard a dozen times already. I'm just going to give my impression of it. Um, uh, I guess you could say an artistic impression, not a note impression or a professional, you know, tobacconist opinion. And after two bowls of it, two and a half. I find it to be an easy, pleasant, 
uncomplicated Virginia so far. It has the appeal of the citrus and the hay that everybody talks about. Um, it has all that allure of the Virginias, you know, the beard aroma on it. Easily a four. Very pleasant, subtle, nice smell. Um, so beard aroma of four, definitely. Four out of five. I enjoy it, and I enjoyed it when I first lit it. I kind of am biased towards Virginia, so I go into them with the thought that I'm probably going to enjoy it. Um, but it, it, that, that has backfired on me because there have been some Virginias that I have not enjoyed. Yeah, just, it's a subtle, nicely aromaed Virginia. Very pleasant, very pleasurable and mild, cool. Um, The only other pure, pure Virginia I can compare it to is like Mac Baron HH Pure Virginia. And it's similar to that in nature. It seems to be maybe maybe a slightly milder version of that or slightly milder in its behavior to HH Pure because HH Pure is a great Virginia, but it's, it's a little bolder. It's a little more, um, <clears throat> she's got a little bit more it's subtlety. It's got all the clean subtlety to it. Okay, so they're, they're real similar. They're, they're very similar. I... I I hesitate to pick, if I were to put them side to side and smoke them, I don't know that I could pick them out. It's sweet. It's got the sweetness. I love it. Overall, I could find this being a very, very enjoyable um, straight Virginia that I could probably smoke quite comfortably most of the day. And every day and really not have to think too much about it. Hmm. That's as deep as I want to go with my impressions of it so far. Um, yeah, I'm putting this in the rotation. I'm going to I'm gonna stack, stack some up, you know. So, very satisfying. Very satisfying puff. So what brings us here today? A little bit of a discussion topic today. Just, just, just to talk while we're having a pipe. And I'm working on this picture. And let me make sure this is recording because I'm going to be... Um, I'll, I'll put a... I'll put a... Um, there we go. I'll put a... A little bit of an overlay or b-roll here with this picture while I'm working on it. Just fun fantasy piece, you know. Angels. This is a series of angels I'm um, working on. It's called our series, a kids series, to, called Training Angels, and it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. I've had it in the works for a lot of years, um, and it's it's kind of a counterculture a counterculture entertainment push that I'm personally making. Counterculture, I mean by countering, countering the modern audience, modern culture, which isn't actually true. There isn't much of them. The modern audience in context of the woke cults idea doesn't actually exist. For the most part so anyway this is the clean entertainment let's put it this way clean fantastical entertainment that is that is appealing to young crowd and maybe points them in a different direction than this modern victim cult victim olympics society you know, virtue, empty virtue signaling society. Let's just put it that way. Something to give them an alternative viewpoint, to give people character they can be excited and inspired by. Dynamic and diverse characters that represent a broad range of human cultures.
with a foundation of moral virtue. And here's the struggle I'm personally having as an artist, not a victim, as an artist. How to represent two boys and girls, young men and women, children of all ages, whatever. How to represent true forms, <laughs> the true forms of men, women, girls, boys, in an appropriate and modest way. That's the struggle I have here sometimes. Um, specifically when, when, when making content for young women or girls. Um, because you want it to be appropriate. You want there to be empowerment. Um, you want there to be empowerment. You want there to be an appropriate level of of uh it's just basically just anatomy as you could say to tell the story and portray the character but you do want it to be done in a non-sexualized way because our world is obsessed with sexualizing everything kids everybody right now girls well, at the same time telling them they should be foaming at the mouth for being sexualized but also sexualizing it. And if you if you don't believe that, look at Hollywood. Hollywood is a perfect example of this. Like they, it's just perverse, Hollywood is. But they take everything and start hypersexualizing it. And they've done it recently with like Wednesday, that Wednesday Adams show or whatever. I haven't watched most of it. I watched a little bit of it, but it was just too woke for my liking. It's just more of the same message. Same garbage get better writers um but everything you know if you look on social media now it's like this this sexualization of a high school girl high school teenager and the promotion of that and it's like really you're trying to empower young women by sexualizing them making them pop cult icons and then telling them they need to hate people who look at them with or, or hate the fact that they are sexualized. It's totally mental. So anyway, this is my, what I'm working on here. The, my, my trial with trying to modestly portray the characters that I'm trying to create here. And this characters are gonna be all different ages, um, age groups, you know, they're gonna, Represent. I'm gonna have some kid characters, just young children, actual children characters that are just fun and quirky and um, chibi-like, you know, anime chibi. Then I envision some of the content being for little older generations, um, preteens and teenagers, people transitioning into that adulthood frame and addressing the issues along with that and addressing them in a biblical context. Um, but the, the real issues of the world today and, and addressing them from a biblical standpoint, from a conserv... Is it conservative? No, it's not conservative. It's a Judeo-Christian viewpoint. Because I believe a foundation in that will do better for society, a moral society. A moral society based on Judeo-Christian values, um, or at least centered around that type of value system will be, has been, can be, the most prosperous, free, and functional ever. And, and, and we've proven it here. Whether you like to admit it or not, we have. And we're also really quickly proving what happens when you go the opposite direction. I swear my camera hates me. So anyway, um, design-wise though, here's where I'm at. Trying to get away from with my designs, and I'll show some of the other images I have. Other characters I've created over the years. I'm trying to get away from that typical angelic, you know, cherub 
Renaissance style angel portrayal or or anything like that and move it towards more of like a, a sci-fi spacey anime feel I think it'd be really cool and especially if the, the angels are not it's not gonna be a biblically like Bible philosophy pound for pound what you know whatever it's just it's a vehicle it's a vehicle to tell a story um, in a fun way and I love you know wings and, and flying and all that kind of stuff so I think as a society we've always had a fascination with angels and um, for good reason you know uh, so I'm trying to do it in like an anime sci-fi uh, futuristic type of way what the angels actually look like I can you know if you can imagine say the heaven heaven's real um, why can't there be a little bit of a fantastical element what is the fantastical element to heaven outside of the you know the kind of the classical renaissance style interpretations of heaven and hell and the angels and demons and all that stuff maybe there's some kind of prehistoric post-historic and like atlantean element to things that are that is or there could be at least within the story there could be a lot of fun you can have with that so that's what I'm trying to do with the characters and the angels. Give them a little bit of romantical classicism to them in their in their 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 styles and their weapons and in their 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 physiology and stuff like that. Give a little bit of romantic classicism, mix it with a little bit of anime chibi, and then throw in some really high tech, like science fiction style fantasy um, technology. I think it could be really cool. So that's where I'm going with it. That's why these characters kind of look the way they do. And I'm, I'm still kind of developing styles and stuff for that uh, as I go. I haven't solidified my stories yet. Um, I have... Some of this is definitely under intellectual property, property rights stuff going on. Like some of the characters and trademark. I actually have a logo and a trademark. So everything I create goes under that until I can solidify the story. And it may not be time for me to tell the story yet. Like, it might not be... And it just may not be time. <clears throat> but I can't... I honestly can't think of a better time. Than right now to point people back to the foundation of what the story is really going to point everybody to eventually. In, in, in a manner, in a broad way. And that is Christ. I'm going to use it as a vehicle to tell a fun story. Like Disney, not Disney style, God, Disney gross, um, but to tell a fun story and to tell it with fun characters that kids and young adults and people all over the world can identify with. But the ultimate message, make no mistake about it, my ultimate goal is a message that leads them back to questioning. Christ. What is that? What is Christ? What is that's I, I I got no problems. Question, you know, like that's what I want people to do is question all of it. You know, that's the idea. That's the idea here is cause questions. Oh, oh, messed that up. My goodness, doing hands, holy smokes! If there's anybody that's really great at doing hands and you want to come do all mine for me, great, that'd be awesome. I'll pay you pay you just to draw the hands on my characters. I'm gonna hire my boys when they're old enough because they're they're fired up about this. They really are. They're fired up about the training angels and this is really the first time I've put it out in public to the training angels story idea that we have. They are pumped and they're creating all kinds of cool stuff for it too so I'm gonna have them involved in some capacity in the future and that's gonna be awesome. That looks jacked. Okay let's erase that. We're going to have to get some reference for that little point. And I'm not sure what to do with this area right here. It needs to be armor of some kind. And this is where the cool part comes in because I can mix armor styles from all the different historical elements. Because if, you know, angels uh, are eternal, basically. Uh, immortal. Eternal. Immortal. Eternal. Are they immortal at all? I mean, is, 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 can you be immortal if you've never been mortal? If you've just only been spiritually eternal? I don't know. Another question I'll have.
when I get there. But they've been around a long time. So they're gonna have kind of an ethereal nature to them. And their armor and stuff like that can have a historical allure or uh, elements, elements that allude to anything in history. Anything I want to do, which is beautiful. Anyway, a little bit of a long pipe rant today. Thank you for joining me again. Hope you had a, at least a good smoke while you're listening to me chatter. Maybe a little food for thought and at least got some entertainment out of the deal. Let me know what you think about the story idea, Training Angels. And if you have any comments on the comments I made, drop them below. Like, subscribe, share. Please be respectful. You be respectful to me and I will be respectful to you. And I hope that you find truly in life good friends, fair winds, and cool smoke. Thank you.